m i h u m i s a n g hello again. Welcome to In Taiwan We Speak, your audio guide to Taiwan's mind-blowing linguistic diversity. I am Alexander Shin, and today we continue our conversation about the Bonun language with Umav Ispalakan, a Bonun activist and digital creator. Now, hi Umav again. Since you're active in sort of digital advocacy for indigenous rights, but also indigenous languages and Bonun language in specific. Uh, to what extent do you think indigenous languages are now present in Taiwan's, you know, digital space and online environment? I think, of course, it's getting better than the past decades. But the more crucial things might be the policy development of a national language act mm. in Taiwan. That's very important. After that, I see so many resource coming to the school, coming to the. Um, Society, uh, communities, or some association. On my podcast, I we do have collaboration with IRDF, IRDF Indigenous Language Research and Development Foundation. Mm. Yeah, that we do have some collaboration with them, uh, so I know how does them uh, practice them and being supportive to indigenous language. And I know on the on my own observation on the social media, I think it's become more explosive. Of indigenous language, I do have some friend. Maybe I can introduce you later. Mm. I do have some friend. They also do the language educating platform on Instagram or use their podcast reels or TikTok or something. And some of my friend they come to tell me that Uma, do you know why we start our platform or why we start our fan page because of you? I say why? What? Say, they say because we see oh you can do this. So we can do. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, I, I sincerely think like that because I am not a really, I'm not a teacher of language, and I am not also a, any expertise for anything. I'm not expertise for anything, but even me can do. No one cannot do. <laughs> this is how I promote our social media or our platform. They say this is very easy. You just set out your platform. No matter is face Facebook fan page or set out a podcast. I, because I now I also. Teach people to how to do podcast now on in the indigenous community university in Gaoshong mm. or the Gaoshong、uh, Gaoshong Indigenous Committee. Yeah, so I want more people to get involved into this, so it can become a new atmosphere. Not only on social media, maybe on in our daily life, people can be proud or be more surely to use your indigenous language because I've been there when I speak. My own language, I feel so uncomfortable because no one understands me, or、mm. no one will encourage me to use my、uh, indigenous language in the classroom or on in any place. So I've been there. So now I hope the environment can be more comfortable. And the law is very important. The, the、mm. policy is very important. But in our own way, we can do more for them. But I think the most important, the key point is you have to be happy. Ha- be happy to do this. Do not give yourself too many pressure because we have to go to work. <laughs> we have to learn. We have to.、Uh, some students they are still in the school. They have to、uh, preparing for their homework. Do not be too self oppression. Learning culture because some extra work basically. Yeah, it's really extra work. But some younger students they come to me say they say, "Yeah, I cannot do as good as you. I cannot speak our language yet, and I live in the city, and people will look down on me because I never know." Things about indigenous tribe or indige- indigenous、uh, ritual or something, so people look down on me. They say I have indigenous identity, but I don't look like indigenous people. And every time I hear about this, I feel very,、uh, very sad for them, for those opinion pushed to them. And I'll say this is not your fault, and you have your, you have your stage, your steps. So do not influence by by then you when you. Prepare very well. You can go ahead, but if you are still on the way, you can just take a break. You you don't have to become a master for now. You、mm. can just grow out first, <laughs> be independent. Then you can do anything you want to do. You want want to share, and but by, by that time, if you share anything on the Instagram or on your podcast, you say something, and you there are some people say something not nice to you. You come to me. I'll help you. <laughs> I'll help. I'll help you to fight back. I would.、Uh, I would tell you how to deal with this kind of opinion. The media, social media, self media, it, it can become a 
another supportive way to younger people to get closer to their learning process. Your podcast is called What's Up Umaf yeah. or Umaf Ruhala in Mandarin. There you discuss indigenous affairs and various issues that concern indigenous peoples. What are some of the most recurring topics that you touch um, in your program? Um, recently, we talked about something that Han people do, which is very cultural appropriation. Mm. Yeah, and sometimes we talk about how indigenous people face their ident self identity confusion, and sometimes we talk about like what's news happens in our our circles. Yeah, and I remember one time we share, we even share with audience what is the most most popular song in village, some old songs. So <laughs> indigenous young men love to sing, uh, even though those are old songs, but we love to sing. Yeah, and I think most of our audience that give us the feedback is like uh, they like to hear me and another host, the professor the guy. They like to hear our re interaction because not so many. I I search for it, but for now, not so many indigenous podcasts specifically talk about social issues. And the two hosts are so different age <laughs> because we are seventeen year age different. So uh, we can share, and we also we are uh, different gender and from different indigenous. Village, so we can share so many different opinions. So they like like to hear we interaction on the podcast show, and they can also learn how to talk about those issues because some issues that young people might think is that too serious or is that too sensitive? Are we able? Are we allowed to talk about this? Mm -hmm. Because I remember one time we even talk about in a uh, indigenous township, they try to hold an event, they make a traditional ritual into gym competition that's very weird so we try to uh, voice out that we think this is this is not always correct so we hope the that townships that township can uh, think about it more then uh, the result is that even really stop for for all the concern so sometimes what we talk about can really influence the society's issues like every time we are trying to Prepare for another episode. We will do a little chat, and I will say, Lao what do you want to talk about this time?" And Lao will be like, "What happened to indigenous mm -hmm. people recently?" And I'll just introduce him. So, oh, this this place uh, happened to uh, some stereotypes com conversation or something like that. And as we start to talk, uh, we, and we we know because there's not so many people dare to talk about this, so. They, they will come to listen. As they come to listen, this can make this thing bigger. So someone who is important will listen to this too. So they can make some change, uh, like in the uh, school system or not in the uh, government system. They will hear our message from our podcast. Now, if you don't mind me asking, what are some of the most recent issues similar to those you mentioned that you discussed recently? There was a bullying event happened in mm. high school last year in the central part of Taiwan and when that happened me and our professor Lugai we also feel very sorry about how indigenous people suffer from this kind of situation but we also want to do some advocacy for enhance the better environment for indigenous people in campus at the first they write some inappropriate article they use the term that sounds like cursing indigenous people, uh, mm. like dead indigenous people in Taiyi. I mean, I just a lot of say that huan na. They use the term as their merchandise items. In Taiyi, it means dead ind indigenous. It's a very bad word. Some high school students use it as their propaganda. I don't know. And when they discovered this problem, they put the items down, but the message on the social media, on the Instagram, is blow out. And we, people on the internet discover this, then the president of that school and the teacher of that school, they come out to uh, say sorry. And those students don't feel regret for this. They feel like, I'm gonna bully indigenous people, indigenous students, because you make, you make us embarrassing. So 
then the bullying things come out. The legislative yuan uh, interrupt this. Oh uh, wow! So mm, it became like a big conversation. Become, become big conversation during that time. Our podcast and my my fan page we keep spread these issues that there are something not nice to indigenous students happen in that high school. And uh, until the legislative yuan interrupt uh, into this, then more and more news come out. The school apologizes again. They have to do some act to revise all the mistakes. Then I know they start to set up some courses to make students can learn more about cultural sensitive. Then I went to that high school for two different classes to give a speech to try to tell those young non-indigenous people. If you don't know our really real situation, I wish you to learn, and we need you guys to know that we need to、uh, communicate with each other because not no one should be treated like this,、mm. and no one born in this identity should be bullied or be misunderstood. But actually, since I started a podcast, there are so many like university, high school, or junior high school. They start to invite me to their campus to do speech. To do the advocacy for cultural sensitivity、mm. and be be nicer to the people who have different background、uh, from you.、And、do you feel like there's more demand for that knowledge now? No, I think we still have to do more for this because sometimes you educate this group in another corner in the society that never heard about this. As an activist, the hardest way is you have to. Do it again and again. You cannot just say one time because you educate these people here. Then another, another day, another side, another communities. There, the same question come out again and again. So we have to keep our energy inside,、mm. or know how to heal our trauma before. So we are able to stand up again and again and to tell this story again and again. And I know this is very necessary because sometimes people they need to see the real person. To stand up for, tell them the true story,、mm-hmm. not only the 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 curse, the teaching, but but also the true story telling and sharing. And there are so many times after my speech, there are some some kids, some teenagers cry on their seats. And when I go to ask them,、um, are you okay? What's what's going on? And they will start to share that how、uh, how many. Struggling memory, they have、uh, how many suffering、uh, situation they have had been in their、uh, since their childhood or their teenagehood.、Mm. So, because I I've been there, so I can understand them very very fast. Do what I can do because、uh, maybe just one word or one story I can pick up those breaking hearts. Oh my god,、mm-hmm. <laughs> something like that. So that's why I start this. I do my podcast now. Only for entertainment. I do my podcast for、uh, self healing and reach out to our partner in Taiwan. I know sh- I should do more English versions. So maybe I can reach out more partner. It's gonna be so、world. much work. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I'll, I'll try my. I will try to do this more. But、uh, for now, maybe my energy or my influence, I can、uh, ma- more focus on、uh, young people or students in the campus or on. In this society,、mm. yes. Thank you so much, Uma. On that note, I think that's all the time we have for this one. Once again, we will be waiting for you, dear listeners, next week with more. My name is Oleg, and see you next week. <laughs>